Hello, I'm Caleb Colley, pulpit minister here at Lakeside. Thank you for joining us for this live stream. By tuning into this broadcast, you demonstrate your interest in New Testament Christianity, and we're so thankful for that. Perhaps you're considering Lakeside as a possible church home for you and your family. If so, this broadcast is for you. If you'd like to continue your study of New Testament Christianity, then join us for one of our worship services or Bible classes. Or email me at calebcolley at lakesidechurchofchrist.com. The live stream is also designed for the benefit of our members who can't be with us due to illness. We are praying for your speedy recovery and return. Please let us know if we can do anything for you. The live stream is not designed to replace God's plan for the assembly of the church. Now open your Bible and let's begin. Okay, so I moved the announcements to the start so I would introduce Steve and... The one thing I forgot was to introduce Steve. So Steve Gober is here tonight, and he is with World Bible School. And for those of you who may participate, a number of you do, in Monday Night for the Master, Rick Buss leads that program for us, and about every month we send out 100 different World Bible School, um, some literature to about 100 people, still about 100 people a month, um, to spread the gospel. It's a great program. Uh, as we get... Um, Farther along, we're going to move to the internet uh, base, so we'll get all of the people in this area here. But Steve is a regional representative over like six states, and he says it feels more like 16 states. So um, he's here just to talk to us about World Bible School. Steve? Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. Certainly enjoyed the uh, good work with the kids there, Caleb. I'm glad he was asking those children those questions instead of us adults, aren't you? Uh, but we're grateful for the opportunity to be with you tonight to talk to you about World Bible School. My wife and I was able to attend one night of your gospel meeting this past week and certainly enjoyed hearing uh, some good preaching at that time. But I know now that you have a World Bible School program ongoing here and we appreciate so very much those of you that are involved in that. And I want to encourage those of you that are not involved to please consider doing so and as you uh, watch this update presentation tonight. Hopefully you will be encouraged to do just that. But when we think about the things that are happening at World Bible School, we are maintaining about a million and a half active ongoing Bible studies at any given time. Now these people are representing around 255 countries around the world, uh, but these are nonetheless precious souls that are learn learning the gospel of Christ. They're being taught by brethren just like yourselves in various congregations of the Lord's Church throughout the United States and a few foreign countries as well. But these are the numbers of our enrollment that we had last year through our office in Cedar Park, Texas. Just a little over one million for the first time ever where a Bible school exceeded one million new students in a year. Now these are, as I said, the people that were enrolled through our office, so we are not sure how many actually were enrolled because uh, some people submit their names to congregations that are teaching World Bible School lessons, and those are never registered through our office. So we really don't know how many uh, new students we have, but if you do just a little bit of math, just about every 30 seconds we're picking up a new student for World Bible School. And we're grateful for that, and we want that work to expand. But out of those, there are about 4,200 Americans each month that are signing up to take our courses online. Now, they aren't requesting to do it online necessarily. They're just going online to register as a student. Uh, many of those request to do the uh, lessons through the postal mail instead of the Internet. And I uh, haven't figured out why that is necessarily, unless it's the fact that they just want that piece of paper in their hand, perhaps to refer back to or whatever. But we're grateful for these people, and those 4,200 Americans tell me a different story than what I could uh, gather from going out of the community and knocking doors and looking for people to have Bible studies and so forth. Uh, I could easily come to the conclusion that Americans no longer want to hear the gospel. But this tells me there are people out there that are searching and wanting to learn. Now something else that's happening at World Bible School has, has been ongoing since 1973. We're training Christians just like yourselves to become soul winners. And this is something that I talk to elders about all the time, that if you can get your membership involved in teaching World Bible School lessons, and even though they're teaching someone maybe in a foreign country initially, 
when they get the taste of evangelism, it's going to spill over into your local community and into your local congregation, and you're going to see the work greatly expand where you are. But we're working at assisting God's people in fulfilling the Great Commission. And we all are familiar with what Jesus said, go and make disciples in every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Now we are in every nation of the world, either through the postal mail where it is uh, allowable, but in some countries, you know, you can't take a Bible, you can't take Bible lessons, so we are there represented on the internet. So people in every nation of the world have the opportunity to learn the gospel through World Bible School, and that's one of the reasons that I think God has given us the greatest tool available in our day and time to evangelize the masses of the world, because World Bible School is one of the only works that is in every nation of the world. Now I just went black. Okay. What's happening at World Bible School? We're averaging about 350 baptisms each week among our students. And this particular picture was taken near our home back in Alabama, Decatur, Alabama. Uh, this young lady was uh, baptized into Christ along with several others. But I want you to notice on her wrist are handcuffs. You see, the Beltline congregation in Decatur has a wonderful prison and jail ministry that they use World Bible School lessons in. And they have baptized over 60 prisoners so far this year. Now this young lady, even though she was uh, incarcerated and had those handcuffs on her while she was baptized, look at the smile on her face. She has been set free in Jesus Christ. And we rejoice with scenes like this, but 350 precious souls each week are being baptized through World Bible School lessons. And those people are not the result of our work. It is a result of brethren like you who are doing the teaching. And we appreciate that so very much. But something else that's new at World Bible School and was just mentioned that you're going to try to reach the community. I don't know if you are, uh, intend on doing that through the Connect program or not, but let me tell you a little bit about the Connect program. World Bible School has a program where we will set up your congregation, a website, free of charge. We will use a separate URL address from anything you may already have, and it will be connected with World Bible School. We will target any area that you specify. If you want to do uh, Orange Park or if you want to do Jacksonville, or we begin with your church building and we go out a five mile radius. And we can ex enlarge that to whatever uh, dimensions you would like for it to be. We can target more than one area at a time. If you have missionaries that you're helping support in foreign countries somewhere, if they're in Brazil or they're in the Philippines or wherever they are, you tell us where, you're, where you want to target and we will target that area also. And we will advertise through Google Ads for potential students that are interested in taking the Bible Correspondence course. Now we do this at no charge to the congregation. The only cost to you is that when you adopt a student that has registered through your website to take the Correspondence course, then we ask for a $5 donation. And we have seven lesson booklets in our series called the Master Series. And each booklet that they complete, we ask for a 50 cent donation. So you're looking at $8.50 to teach a soul the gospel of Christ. And I think that's quite a bargain in anyone's uh, viewpoint. But we look at the fact that uh, you can use this and you have nothing to lose whatsoever. If you don't have anyone that registers through your website, then you haven't lost a thing. You don't owe anyone anything. It's all on World Bible School. So we are uh, providing this opportunity for brethren to make it affordable for any congregation to evangelize their local community. And I do know from experience, having preached for 30 plus years, uh, that if I go in my own area or my community where I live and I knock on someone's door and they know that I represent the Church of Christ, they probably uh, may or may not study with me. But in the privacy of their own home where no one is interrupting their schedule, no one is sitting down face to face with them, and then in the privacy of their home they will sit in front of their computer and study the Bible. So you can reach people that you would not ordinarily uh, be able to reach otherwise. So this Connect program is certainly something that uh, I recommend to you highly. But also we have a new Bible, and I have a sample of this out in the foyer on the table, uh, along with some other materials. I encourage you to pick some of that up. And, uh, read about it, tell us about World Bible School, but this Bible we had printed for the purpose of a work that we had the opportunity to do in Ghana, Africa. Two years ago, the Minister of Education in Ghana approached our president, John Reese, with a proposition that we couldn't believe nor could we refuse. He said if World Bible School will provide free lesson materials 
and as an incentive, a free Bible to our students who will complete it, we will allow World Bible School lessons to be taught in our high schools. Now, brethren, can you imagine that? Wouldn't that be wonderful in the United States of America? But just like Joseph in Egypt, when the Lord raised him up to uh, be in command of the nation of Egypt, this fellow that was the minister of education just happened to be a former World Bible School student that took the course as a teenager and obeyed the gospel. And the Lord raised him up to a position where he could offer the high schools as an opportunity for us to evangelize. Well, we had to pray about uh, being able to find a Bible that we could afford to have printed because there are over one million high school students in Ghana, Africa, and World Bible School certainly did not have the resources to supply free lesson materials and a free Bible because you're looking at millions of dollars that we didn't have. But we began to pray and search for a Bible, and Crossway, who is a Bible printing organization, gave us their copyright, said, take it, do with it whatever you want to. They found out what we were going to do with it, so they, they gave us the right to reprint their Bible. We put a much nicer cover on it than they have on theirs, and they sell theirs for about $30 in bookstores here in America. But we also put over 100 pages of our own study helps in the back of the Bible. And by the way, this is the only Bible printed by anyone affiliated with the Churches of Christ as far as we can determine. So you won't find the sinner's prayer in this Bible anywhere but there are over 100 pages of study helps. There's a guide to New Testament Christianity in the back of that. Uh, we have had some wonderful stories pertaining to that even. Last year, one of our brethren in Colorado was doing prison ministry work and he purchased 250 of these Bibles from us and gave them out to prisoners. Well, he was studying World Bible School lessons with some of the prisoners and uh, they completed the course and requested to be baptized. Well, he made arrangements with the warden to show up and baptize those men, but when he got there, there was a group that came and wanted to be baptized. He didn't know them. So he began to question, why do you want to be baptized? They said, we studied that guide to New Testament Christianity in the back of the Bible you gave us, and we want to obey the gospel. So he baptized 26 prisoners on that occasion, and that was quite a surprise to him, as well as good news to us as we rejoiced with those men. But we are also offering this Bible free to every qualifying World Bible School student. We figured out that since we were doing the gift to the Ghana students, uh, to have an incentive for them to complete the program or complete the course, it was offered as an elective in the high schools, so they weren't required to take it. But we decided since we have students that take one or two or three lessons and drop out and we never hear from them, let's offer this Bible as an incentive to get them to complete the course. So if they will now complete through lesson five and score at least a 70 on that test for lesson five. And lesson five is about being born of the water and the spirit. We want them to go that far so that they will understand what is required of them to become a New Testament Christian. Then they qualify for a free Bible. So we're giving this Bible to all students that request one after they have studied that fifth lesson or completed it. But we also are offering these Bibles for sale to any of our brethren who are interested in purchasing those. They're $5 each plus shipping, which is quite a bargain uh, when you consider the quality of this Bible. And the study helps alone, I said, was worth more than the $5. But we think about the things that are new in World Bible School. Since we had this Bible printed and the brother in Colorado didn't have a problem, some wardens have a problem with it because when you open it up, there's a little... A gap in the binding there where someone could slide a file or a knife or whatever, as you can see on the picture there. So we went back and had a paperback version printed with a glued binding on the back. And it will uh, go and be legal for any prison ministry work that you might be involved in. And those two also are $5 each uh, plus shipping. Uh, last year we had the opportunity to, uh, well this year actually, began in uh, February. We hired a new tech guy by the name of Tim Yeager. Some of you may have met him at Polishing the Pulpit. He was there along with myself uh, representing World Bible School. But Tim is from Birmingham, Alabama, and he is a, a very intelligent man pertaining to electronics and things of that nature, and uh, he's out of my league for sure. Uh, but we were blessed to be able to have Tim. You see, last December, our tech guy that had been with us for six years turned in his resignation. He was going back into a secular line of work, and we were just devastated. But we began to pray, and the Lord gave us someone even better than what we had. And that's the case many times when things like that happen. God has ways of working things out for good to those who love Him, right? Romans 28, 28. 
But we think about what Tim has been doing. He's developing new programs through, uh, to teach through technology. And we already had part of this in place before Tim came on board. But he is developing a, an app, and it's in the pilot program right now. Hopefully it will be released by the first of the year. Well, where you can take your iPhone and you can study World Bible School lessons with other individuals. It works somewhat like Facebook and we're uh, testing that right now and as soon as that gets developed that's going to help us be able to uh, reach other people but also he's looking at a program that is going to reach foreign people that want to learn more about English and uh, you can study World Bible School lessons with them through that program also. I want to tell you just briefly about a trip that I made to Africa last year. I had the opportunity to go to Zimbabwe, Africa. Zimbabwe has been for the past five or six years the leading nation of World Bible School students of any country in the world. And as I was able to go there, uh, I went with our president, John Reese, and he wanted to show me a site that was there, one of the seven natural wonders of the world called uh, Victoria Falls. And this is the deepest waterfall supposedly in the world, it's 350 feet straight down. And I wasn't going there for a, uh, tourism necessarily, but this is an aerial view of that. There's one and one half miles long of that uh, waterfall and it is somewhat beautiful and very loud and wet, but there's a walking trail illustrated by the red line there. It's one and one half miles from one end to the other. And across the, uh, fall is the country of Zambia. But round at the far end where the river turns back southward, you see at the lower end of that arrow there's a bridge. And here's a picture of that. There's a white building out there and you can go out there and pay a certain sum of money and you can bungee jump down to the river below. And I did not do that. Uh, I valued my life a little more than uh, to be able to try something that, of that nature. But I was there to be able to work with World Bible School preachers that are our follow-up workers, to do some follow-up work myself. And this is a sample of the village life in Zimbabwe, the people that live out in the country, they still live in the round huts, but most of them have upgraded to brick huts now, as you can see in that picture. But these people are interested in studying the Word of God. They have nothing in life to offer them, so their, their only hope is in Jesus Christ. When I was there, they told me that, that the unemployment rate was 92%. 92% unemployment, so you can imagine the poverty in this nation. But yet these people are hungry for the Word of God. And I spent my time in downtown Harare and uh, staying with one of the local elders and his wife in their home. Uh, as you can see, that looks much like any modern city, but uh, nonetheless, it was somewhat less than uh, American standards if you get down into the streets. But we held a training seminar for our follow-up workers and when I was there we had 32 men that were present. We invited those men together because we wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page and using the same uh, concepts and uh, practices concerning doing follow-up work because when we submit names to these men uh, they will go out, depending upon where, what area of Zimbabwe the students are located in, the preacher who is nearest to them will go and study with them and make sure they understand what they need to know and then baptize them into Christ and then introduce them to the church nearest them as well. But while I was there, <clears throat> those men volunteer to do follow-up work for World Bible School. And most of them preach in one or more congregations each Sunday. The oldest man there was 82 years old. And his son is also a gospel preacher and he told me a story about his father. He said that his dad went out on one occasion uh, while he, when he was about 12 or 14 years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. And he always carried a briefcase when he went to do follow-up work because he carried his Bible and his uh, study helps inside. And he left and came back very shortly just all bloody and beat up and his clothing torn, his briefcase was stolen. Some men had, uh, saw him walking down the street and thought that he must have some money because of the way he was dressed. So they mugged him and sent him back home. Well, his son was so torn up by the uh, sight of his father, he said, Daddy, is there not some way you can make a living other than preaching? And his dad said something that I will never forget. As long as I have Jesus in my heart, I have to tell about it. And isn't that the heart of every one of us? It should be that we have the faith 
that God's word like Jeremiah is like a fire in our bones and we cannot hold it back. We have to tell about Jesus because he is our wonderful savior. But I want to tell you about Chris Magado. He is the supervisor over these 32 men in Zimbabwe. And he is the only one on payroll from World Bible School. That's John Reese, our president on the uh, right-hand side there. But Chris was abandoned when he was about nine months old. His mother and father separated, and uh, the mother left him with his daddy, and his daddy was drinking re real heavily is the reason that they were having the problems. But nonetheless, she abandoned him, and his dad couldn't take care of him very well, so he spent time in an orphanage, and then... He grew up and obeyed the gospel. Well, his father had come back into the area and wanted Chris to move back in with him. But he, had, he was raised partially in an orphanage operated by the Churches of Christ. Well, fortunately for Chris, he had learned enough of the truth. He continued to go to church even though he was living with his father. But he obeyed the gospel and when he went home and told his dad what he did, his father kicked him out of the house. The reason being that those people believe the only way you can pray to God is through your dead ancestors. And Chris was telling him, no, the Bible says there is but one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. And so he said, if you believe that, then you can no longer live under my roof. So he had to, at about the age of 12, go to the preacher's house. That's the only place he could go. Well, he stayed with the preacher for a while. The preacher finally convinced his dad to allow him to move back home, but he was not allowed to participate in any family activities. He could not uh, eat meals with them. He had to do all of that alone. So that's the circumstances in which Chris was brought up. But nonetheless, he became a gospel preacher and a great one at that. And he told me that during 2016, up until I was there in July 2017, that he had baptized over 3,000 World Bible School students himself. Now, brethren, that is a busy man. He didn't convert all of these people. They were converted through the gospel by teachers just like you. But Chris had baptized over 3,000 himself in a year and a half. And during that period of time, he also baptized 1,822 prisoners. You see, Chris has, uh, Chris has an official document from the prison ministry in uh, Zimbabwe that gives him security clearance to go inside any prison. But prisoners in Zimbabwe cannot receive nor send mail. The only way they get World Bible School lessons is Chris takes them inside the prison physically. He showed me a picture of himself with two duffel bags about waist high that were filled with World Bible School lessons that were completed, ready to send back to America to teachers like yourselves. So out of the, that time that Chris baptized those 1,822, he baptized 250 in one day. So this is a man that is busily involved in the Lord's work and doing a great work. And he is bringing souls to Christ. During that period of time, he established 14 new congregations of the Lord's church. Now what Chris does is if he, there are uh, some people in a particular area that are ready to obey the gospel, he goes to baptize those people. When he gets a cluster of people together, if there isn't a church nearby, then he will establish a church where they are, call them all together and get them uh, accustomed to assembling and so forth, and he will preach for them for two to three months until he can find a preacher that will take on that work. So out of that period of time, he has established 14 uh, new congregations. While I was there, we also invited our uh, local World Bible School students that were in the area to come to a seminar that we held on a Saturday at a uh, central location, a neutral site. We rented a building and there were 103 World Bible School students that showed up on that occasion and we separated them off based upon where they were at in their studies. Uh, but those brethren found out that I had been converted from a denominational church, so I was the one that was fortunate enough to get all the students that were coming from a denominational background. And that automatically makes those the toughest because you have to unteach what they've taught, been taught in error and then teach them the truth, right? But at the end of the day, uh, there were three of my con uh, students and also uh, 12 in total that we baptized into Christ. So we're grateful for those precious souls that were brought to the Lord. And I heard a report that this year they had 34 baptisms during that period of time as well. So we're grateful for that. But this young man, Oswich Mashaba, is doing a wonderful work as well. Oswich works for the Gospel Chariot Organization, if you're familiar with them. Uh, they have a, 
uh, vans, much like this one, that go all over Africa and they will pull into a village and they will lower down the sides their converted uh, panel vans. They have a rollout stage and they'll get out there and preach and sign up World Bible School students. You see the World Bible School logo on the side of his. It's called the mini chariot because it doesn't have the rollout side, but I'll show you what uh, Oswich does with that. But while I was there during that period of time that I was studying with those people on, on the seminar, uh, there were several that I wanted to have follow-up studies with, and they agreed to do so, but I didn't have transportation. So I switched, volunteered, and he drove me around in the gospel chariot van and carried me to my appointments at each one of my Bible studies. In fact, he did the follow-up work with those students after I came back to America. But this is something that I switch does on a daily basis. He has Bible studies, as is shown there at the top, but he carries in the back of that van a large tent that you can see in the bottom picture, and he will go to a village and set up that tent and set out some chairs and he will begin preaching and he just carries on gospel meetings here and there and everywhere and bringing a lot of souls to Christ in addition to doing follow-up work for World Bible School. This is actually the church building where Chris Magadu preaches and notice the roof of that. There is no ceiling, it's just open top with a tin roof. Can you imagine how hot that is when it's a warm day like we've had here today? sitting inside worshiping the Lord. And, but notice those people, what they're sitting on. They're not sitting on padded pews like you and I are accustomed to. They're not sitting in an air-conditioned building, but they will sit there for hours on hours and hear the gospel proclaimed. So we appreciate the kind of faith that they have and their commitment. But I want to ask you tonight about giving a Bible. I talked to you about the Bible, showed you what we were doing with that. But how much would it be worth to you to put a Bible in the hand of a deserving student? By deserving, I'm talking about someone who has completed the fifth lesson, born of the water and the spirit. They've gone that far with us. They're interested in studying the word of God and they may or may not own a Bible themselves. Now I know that all the students we have don't need a Bible. There's some that already have one. But the biggest majority of our students live in those round huts like I showed you and I assure you, you're probably not going to find a Bible if you go inside. So you might be able to give for the price of $5 a Bible to an individual that has never owned one in their life. May never have the opportunity. In fact, those people couldn't buy a Bible if they were available because they simply do not have the funds. So when these people study the Word of God, even though they learn the gospel and they're ready to become a New Testament Christian, their studies are completed but they don't have a Bible to go home to, to sit down and study like you or I. They can't learn those books of the Bible like we heard those children reciting tonight. They don't have access to the Bible except what little they're introduced to at the church service. So for the cost of $5, you can put a Bible in the hand of someone who is deserving and someone who may never have the opportunity to own one otherwise. Now these are people that are in need of the gospel, and they are in need of the Bible after they obey the gospel. I took the opportunity to put some envelopes out there in the foyer. That's the front and the back, if you would please fill those out, and there's an envelope uh, to put that in. If God has blessed you, I don't want to take anything away from your normal contribution, but if God has blessed you and you're willing and able to assist us in supplying Bibles free to those people that are in need of them, then I encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity. Do you want me to extend the invitation as well? While I was there, I was asked a question. Because those preachers that I was working with, they knew what I did for World Bible School. That I travel six states, which yes, seems like 16 or more. I told some of the brethren I'm spread thinner than peanut butter. But knowing that I travel about and visit various congregations, I should understand just a little bit of what's going on in our church community. Those brethren, you see, are accustomed to daily or weekly, at least, additions to the churches over there. They're growing. But they asked me this question. How is the church in the United States doing? I'm not sure what kind of answer they were expecting, but I was ashamed of the answer I had to give. Because many places where I go, I find the church is diminishing in number. 
That may not be true for you, and I hope it isn't. But a lot of the churches I visit are far smaller than they were just a few years ago. So I had to tell those brethren, I'm unfortunately the church in the United States is not growing. The next question they asked me is one that I had real difficulty answering. They said, why? You see, they couldn't understand why the church isn't growing. We have the gospel. We have the power of God to save every soul in the world. Why is the church not growing? And I know there are a lot of reasons that we could give. A lot of people in our society are turning away from God and there are various reasons for that. But when it comes down to it, brethren, I think the bottom line is we're not sowing the seed like we ought to. You see, the seed is the Word of God. That's what Jesus said. We're somewhat like a farmer sitting on his front porch in his rocking chair and his tractors are in the barn. He looks out over his field and he says, man, I hope I have a good harvest this fall. But he never plants a seed. And I'm sure there's not a person in this assembly tonight that would not love to see the church grow even here and other places as well. I know you love souls. I know you love God. I know you love His Word. I know you like to share His Word. But are we sowing the seed like we need to? You see, there's a lot more stony and hard soil out there now than there used to be, right? So that means what? We have to plow a little deeper and we have to sow more seed. So why is the church in the United States not growing? like those in other places of the world. A lot of various answers to that question. But then I turned the focus back on myself. Because years ago I worked for a guy that had a plaque hanging in his office. And it said that if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. You think that deterred folks from going in his office and complaining about stuff? Yes. But there was some truth underlying that. If I don't have part of the solution, if I'm not a part of the solution, I'm part of the problem. So when I think about the church not growing and thriving in America, I'm part of the problem. And if I'm not sowing seed, I need to begin to do so. And I encourage you that if you are an individual that realizes that you're not doing all you should be doing, you're not sowing the seed like the Lord would have you to do. And I'm not here to scold you or get on to you tonight. I love you. But I want us to think because these brethren made me think. When they asked me the question, how's the church in the United States doing? And they wanted to know why it wasn't growing. I had to do some soul searching. And perhaps there's one here tonight that realizes maybe you need to repent. Maybe you are part of the problem. Maybe you can do better and you just haven't been and you want to. We're going to sing an invitation song to give anyone an opportunity to come and make their wishes known if they're ready to obey the gospel. I want you to know that Jesus loved you and he gave his life for you and he gave himself for your sins. For the sins of the world, yes, but for your sins. For every lie that you have ever told, for everything you may have ever stolen, for every misdeed you've ever done, He died for you that you could have eternal life in heaven. And perhaps tonight is the best night that you have had the opportunity to give your life to Christ. Come and confess Jesus as God's Son, repenting of your sins. and Be baptized in water to have your sins washed away in His blood. Come up out of that water a new creature, rejoicing, ready to serve the Lord, and continuing on your road to heaven. If there's a need that you have in your own life, whatever it might be, we encourage you to come while together we stand and sing.